the hardest trade I ever took. Hi, it's Charlie giving you Saturday's video. I hope you're very well. And um, very often we associate the hardest trades as being trades that were no losing trades, maybe. And so, but this trade, well, for for me, most of the most difficult trades are actually were actually winning trades. Whereas for some people out there, traders, um, their hardest trades are like one example I gave a couple of weeks ago, that chap who's bought a stock and then held on to it and held on to it as it's gone underwater and underwater and added to it. That must be they, those sorts of thing, trades for a lot of people are no doubt going to be very hard because they're going to be highly stressful. Um, the hardest trades for, for me are the trades that actually become a, a winning trades. So let me give you the backdrop here. And what we can take from this. So I think first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you out to a monthly chart here of the euro dollar and um, we're talking about this period here so you can see this period where the euro dollar um, as a monthly time frame came all the way down to this long-term trend line here. So this long-term trend line um, you can probably just about see goes all the way back down back to these lows of 2000 um, or more actually they do go further back. So it was a, a big trend line um, that we had here, long-term trend line. But the trade actually, so we'd got this backdrop where the euro had been pretty weak. And then it fell into the beginning of 2017. So it chopped around for a bit and fell. And at this point, as you can imagine, we've got a trend line break here. And also we've got a euro dollar, which if you look over to the right hand side here, you can see that it had gone sub 105. I think it got to 103 or so. Yeah, 103 or so at that point. And if you can imagine what the the media and the talking heads were all talking about uh, parity for the euro dollar at that stage. And I must admit, you know, I, I remember being interviewed myself and the interviewer was saying, Charlie, you know, when do you think? the euro dollar um, is going to go to parity um, and how long do you think it's going to take rather than you know is it going to go the, there was an assumption that it's going to go and so we were surrounded at this point by a huge amount of me media talking about financial media talking about and the banks and all of that as well all giving forecasts of a euro dollar going to parity and yet um, and so, and even myself, I was thinking, yeah, surely it's going to go to parity. And yet, what we had was a backdrop where I ended up having technical, um, technical reasons to buy. There were lots of divergences going on down here in early 2017. Um, with that backdrop of a huge amount of negative sentiment. And so it doesn't make it easy. It's easy to look at it back, look back in history and say, oh, yeah, well, that was obvious, you know, obvious. Well, you've got all that negative sentiment um, and you've got a technical buy set up. Yeah, yeah, it is. And that's why I took the trade. Um, but it doesn't make it easy. And this is what the, the title was, the hardest trade I've ever taken. And certainly this, I could have pulled out a few different examples, to be fair, but I'm going to use this one. There was a um, there was a great example, actually, from trading the Dow in 2014, 13, 14, which is a really good example as well for different reasons. Um, and I could even argue some trades I've taken this year, some sw long t longer swing trades as well this year, um, been, been tough, you know, they're, they're, no, they're never easy. But that's the, the the road less traveled, isn't it? So, um, so yeah, so what actually happened, um, we had those technical buys down here. This is just a weekly chart I'm showing now. And so, and you, you can look at it and say, well, yeah, that was easy. And look at this wonderful run. But actually, um, as we can see, it popped up for a bit, then it pulled back. And this is like, well, that's a three, four, five week pullback. Popped up a little bit more, then a sharp pullback before then eventually coming higher, then gapped up. This was when uh, Macron in France was elected. So we had the French elections at this point. Um, so we had to nav I had to navigate through those French elections. Then we had loads of people saying, well, um, we had this big gap up. It's going to come down and fill the gap. So I bought more. <laughs> um, but um, and then and then ran it uh, to about actually it wasn't I didn't it was anything like all of this. I think my targets were up in the 114 zone. Uh, 114 and 117, I think, were my two sort of main targets for it. So I think what I'm trying to say here is that sometimes the most difficult trades, especially outset and even once you're into them, um, 
are the ones that actually become the best trades for you. And so this one across multiple time frames, using sentiment as a backdrop as well, um, had plenty of reasons to, to buy, but it didn't make it any easier to actually do it in your pit of your stomach, your your whatever it is that, that's telling you, your, your fight or flight responses are saying, no, don't do it, don't put the trade on. And yet these are the trades that end up being um, the best. So if you do have a good technical setup, then d please don't shy away from taking it because sometimes when your stomach, the pit of your stomach is telling you, no, I don't want to take this, they can actually become the very best trades. So don't avoid them. It's funny that traders have no patience with their winners much of the time, but plenty of patience with their losers. I talked about um, that, that, like I said, that, that trader from a couple of weeks ago who had bought that stock and having all that patience to hold on to his losers. But um, but do traders have that same patience with the winners? Because that is difficult. And it doesn't matter if you're trading off a five minute chart um, and trying to hold on to a trade for, you know, maybe turning that into a run for a, a few hours. That's very difficult for an intraday trader who might actually want to bank it after 20 minutes. So it doesn't, it's all relative. It's not just about um, holding on to a trade, you know, for you know, many weeks or, or several months, um, it it's all relative to the time frame that you're trading. So do have a look at it and try to work on that, because if you can hold on to your winners that bit better, um, then um, you up your profitability, generally speaking. Take care for now. This is my little thought process here for Saturday, and I'll see you next week.